recent OpenLC version, which is 1.7. So the idea behind the LCA collaboration server was that uh, actually collaborative work on LCA studies is becoming increasingly common. For instance, if you work on an LCA model within a company or in general in a team, either from the same location, like we do here at Green Delta, but maybe you also work in a distributed team from different locations. Um, so in, for this, it's also becoming increasingly important to have a sound methodology of uh, transferring your LCA data or your databases. And that's what the LCA collaboration server has been developed to, to basically to facilitate simultaneous work on LCA studies with nearly real time or actually rather on demand integration of changes from other users who are working from different workstations. So the LCA collaboration server is kind of a, let's say um, it's, it's, a, it's a piece in between the databases of two users which, which hosts an online repository and it allows to, to commit changes to repository which can then be downloaded by other users and uh, you can also follow these changes which also already brings us to the features of the LCA collaboration server. So I will shortly introduce a few of them. This will also help you to familiarize with the terms which we use, and then we will demonstrate them live. So first of all, um, maybe the, one of the most important terms is a repository. So regarding the LCA collaboration server, a repository is basically the equivalent to a database in OpenLCA and it consists of group data sets. So projects, project, product systems, processes, flows, indicators, parameters, and other data in your database. So basically a repository mirrors the local database uh, of the working group's users, or the, yeah, basically the people who work on the LCA study. Um, so what, what you can do is to, to make a commit to a database. So a commit is basically a package of data sets that a user contributes to the remote repository from his or her local computer. So it's basically, let, let's imagine a user has a database and he applies changes. And in order to transfer the changes to the collaboration server and also to other users who will work in the same team, he has to commit these data sets to the repository. And likewise, the other users, they can fetch these data sets from the repository. Um, that's also what you can see in the figures on the right side. So what, what they show is basically the history of commits. So each time a user commits a data set to the repository, the, this will be uh, basically noted down in history. So the top picture shows the history, the commit history in OpenLCA, and you also see the commit history in the LCA collaboration server dashboard. So that's accessible via the web browser. And what you can do with the commit history is also that you can check out previous versions of a repository. So basically you can sort of restore data sets that, uh, that have been contributed by your team members. Um, the second feature is also accessible via the LCA collaboration server dashboard and it's a search function. So you can have actually a repository overarching search function so if you host one LCA collaboration server, you may have several databases or repositories which you can search. And uh, you can also filter your search results and group them. And you can also have this uh, search function being publicly accessible, which is particularly nice if you think about a public database, which users can also access well without registering first. And also these databases, you can make them available for download. So you can actually export them from the LCA collaboration dashboard into download packages, which can then be imported by users. Um, so some more features uh, include a mode to comment and also to manage tasks. So spe specific fields of data sets as well as entire data sets as such can be commented. For this, there's a review mode, which you can activate. We will also show this later. And these comments, they will also show up in OpenLCA. So this is particularly useful if you work in a team and uh, you want to yeah, basically comment on specific items in the databases on which maybe other users of your team will work on. Um, probably one of the nicest features is, is the diff utility. So I already showed you a few slides ago the, 
the version history. So if you restore um, commits from the server, or if you actually download commits from the server in general, so we call this fetch, then, then you also have a tool which compares changes in the database. So for instance, on this figure in the right, on the right hand side, you can see that zinc has been added to the database. And th this is quite handy because oftentimes if you work with other users on a database, it's not always very transparent where changes have been made. And this utility basically points out changes. And some more features, for instance, include notifications. For instance, if, you have, if a comment has been made somewhere or if you have been assigned to a specific task uh, in the repository. And there's also a messaging function uh, so that you can communicate easily with members of your team. And there are also libraries. Libraries are protected data sets that require an additional confirmation to commit changes. So you can have a public library where users can make changes to or contribute changes to a repository. But at the same time, you can also um, protect specific parts of the repository. So you can ensure that the integrity of your repository. And you can, of course, also create users. And you can also aggregate the users to a team. And then a team, again, can be assigned to a specific repository. So this is maybe a bit confusing. But I guess this will become more clear in our live demonstration. And you can also have groups. And a group is basically the entity which is the owner of one or several repositories. So I think maybe at this point, it's still a bit confusing. Um, but we just wanted to show you the basic terms so that you're familiar with them. And we will now show how it actually works in practice. Um, maybe this is also a good point in time. If any one of you already has a question, we would be happy to answer them. Uh, I had a question about the diff utility. Mm -hmm. um, so in the example you showed, uh, we saw there was difference between um, elementary flows, but is it, uh, is it available for any modification? Like, uh, I don't know, some units, some mm -hmm. intermediary flows or? Yes, it's available for every modification. Okay. So, also on the right hand side, you see the process dummy disposal solid waste. So this actually indicates that there has only been one process to which a change has been made. Usually, if you, if you I guess a more realistic scenario would be that you have several changes and they would all, all be listed on the right hand side. So this is actually not shown now correctly in the figure on the right side. But but yes, to answer your question, yes, the, this yes. Uh, diff utility will track all changes. Okay, thank you. Hi, this is Nes uh, from from EcoInvent. Um, I have a question. Um, yes. Is there a roadmap of a commit? Sorry, I, I didn't hear this acoustically. Is there a way to, to roll back a commit? To roll back a commit. Um, Yes, yes, there. So you have this version history and you can check out previous commits. So this is sort of a rollback. Uh, hello, uh, this is uh, Sebastian Greve. I'm also from Green Delta. Um, so the, there's two ways of, of uh, realizing this rollback. So one uh, would be the checkout, as uh, Jonas mentioned. Uh, but uh, this will leave you in a state that is out of sync with the, with the kind of linearized um, uh, workflow in the collaboration server. If you want to keep working on that specific repository with your local DB uh, database, you would um, have a different workflow that is right now a bit uh, impractical, but it's, it's possible to do so. So you can compare your local database, which should be um, uh, totally up to date with the repository. And then compare to previous states in the uh, repository and manually select, so kind of cherry pick the data sets you want to uh, undo or the changes you want to undo, and then commit them back into the repository. This way, you will still have in the repository both states available in the history, but the uh, newest uh, state will be the corrected or rolled back version. All right, thank you. And I think we also put together some information on this in the manual, which we also distributed with you. So afterwards, if you also start testing the LCA collaboration server, 
you, you can, I guess there's also a chapter on this in the manual, so you can also try to, uh, um, yeah, to reproduce this yourself. And of course, we're also happy to answer questions afterwards to support you on this. Um, then, if there are no other questions, I will um, hand the screen over to uh, Sebastian, and then he will guide us through the live demonstration. Okay, uh, so uh, we will um, have this uh, demonstration and um, working with two people, me and Jonas, and um, we will be switching between uh, between the screens, so you can actually see how the common distributed working teamwork would, would uh, apply. Um, so the, the first thing uh, you have to do when you want to work with the collaboration server, but uh, once it is set up already. Um, you will need to create a new um, repository for the database you want to work with. So in my um, OpenSDA, I already have imported an existing database that we have uh, selected for the webinar. This is here the webinar DB. And now I'll go to the, the browser to the collaboration server. So I'll we'll start from the beginning. So look out. So when you navigate to the collaboration server, you will see um, screen and the open screen. Okay, so once you're logged in, so for the resizing. So, um, so now um, I will create a new group first for uh, our demonstration. This group I call demo, and within this group, I can, I can add def, diff, um, different repositories or several repositories to work on. So group can be used to uh, uh, group the repositories into one entity that I can then assign several members. Uh, so I don't need to assign every member to each repository manually. Uh, the repository I will call a webinar. Okay, so um, so now I have the, this empty repository called webinar. So if I click on the data sets, for example, I will, I will see there's no data sets yet to be found. Also, there were no commits, so it's, an, it's a clear uh, empty repository. I will now go back to OpenSCA. Um, the default uh, installation of OpenSCA doesn't have, have the repository feature or collaboration server feature enabled. So I will first need to go to the, set, the preferences of OpenSCA and go to the collaboration tab and enable the feature and also add a server configuration for this. So here I have to specify the, the URL. If you're working in a team, then your administrator will probably uh, send you this URL you will have to use. Um, in our case, this is our instance at cloud.creamdelta.com slash SCA collaboration. Um, my username and password. Okay, so once configured, this has only has to be done once in the beginning, or if you're if you're changing the password or want to have several um, collaboration server instances um, registered. Now OpenSDA is set up for the for use of the uh, collaboration server. I have a new um, menu item repository where I can connect to an existing one. Uh, so I will have to select the server configuration I want to use. And then I have to specify the path of the repository, which is a combination of the group, demo, a slash, and then the repository name, which was webinar. So now I can connect. Now we will check if the URL is correct, if there is actually a repository available and build a, a local index uh, of the uh, local data sets in the database. Okay, it's now indicating that it's connected to a repository, which you can see by the information in the brackets of the database name. 
And also it has some now new elements, or display elements in the navigation. One is the arrow to the right, or chevron, uh, which indicates that there's a change within this element or a child, a child element of this. And if I open uh, the categories here, I can see that there's new elements, which is indicated by the small plus sign on the left side. Uh, this means that because, because right now I'm just uh, just connected to the repository, but I didn't uh, commit yet any changes. So on the, if I go back to the server, there will still be no data sets found. And thus the local version indicates that there are changes here in my local database that are not to be found on the repository yet. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, so I will now commit this initial state of the database to the repository by using the commit functionality. First, we will now check if there's any changes I have to fetch first, because the workflow of the collaboration server I said before is uh, um, set up so you um, have a linear workflow. Uh, so before committing changes, you will always be, have to be synchronized with the remote repository. If you have a bigger data set, this initial commit uh, can take up some time, but this is only for, um, for the first time, of course. Once you uh, have this committed and only have changed like, 10, 20 data sets, this will be much faster, which you will see later in the presentation as well. Um, so now I, I see all the data sets that are in the database. I could make manual changes here again. So I say, ah, I don't want to commit all the data sets. I don't want to. Uh, this method to be committed, but for the presentation now I will commit the whole database and you will have to add a commit message describing your changes. In this case, it's the initial um, commit, for example, and then now I will run it. Um, it will not search for reference changes, so if you select, for example, uh, only um, one data set, but this data set has um, references, for example, if you want to commit a process uh, and it, this process uh, will reference, of course, other flows. And uh, if you made a change to this flow, uh, the database tries to indicate, it tries to um, recognize this and uh, inform you that there's other unselected changes that you might want also to commit. Um, in this case, it wasn't the case because uh, we have selected the complete database. So now it is um, exporting and uploading the data to the collaboration server. Um, maybe this is a good time if you have already some uh, some questions. Um, maybe we can already switch to my screen. Was that too early? Um, no, well, I will have to wait. Uh, okay. Finish. This is a good thing. So uh, before um, Jonas can work with the repository, right now he wouldn't have any access to it because I'm I'm the owner of the repository. And if I go to the members tab in the web application, I can see that I'm the only person um, having access here. So I will need to add uh, Jonas to the uh, to the repository, and I will. At, um, at give him the role of the, of the reviewer because he will at the end of the presentation start a review task and then he will need the role of a reviewer to be able to perform reviews. Um, so now I have added him as a reviewer in my repository and he will be able to connect. So uh, yeah, maybe we can now wait the, some seconds because mm -hmm. it's close to finishing. Uh, this is Guillaume from EcoInvent. I just wanted to know if it's possible to have more than one role for a person. Uh, the roles are hierarchical. So, um, so you have, you have the, if you're a contributor, you are also a reader already. So, mm -hmm. uh, and if you're a reader, you can contribute, of course, and so on. So, um, so it's not okay. possible, Makes sense. but it's not necessary either. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, that's a, but that's a good question because the, the, since we have the groups and the repositories, it can happen that, uh, for example, I could go back to the group and uh, go to the members tab of the group 
and also add-ons here, but just as a reader. So in this case, you could only fetch the data sets and download them, view them in the um, uh, web application, but cannot contribute any data from within OpenSA, for example. And if I go, go back to the repository of the webinar, the member said, now I can see, okay, he's, he has the, he's a group member with a role reader, and he's a repository member with a reviewer role. And in this case, the, the higher role and hierarchy will, will be taken. So he will still be a reviewer in this repository, but in all other repositories, he will just be a reader. Okay, um, so the data set should now be committed. Yes, in OpenSA, you can now see there's no changes anymore uh, marked. And if I go back to the commits in the repository, I should see yeah, the initial commit I just made, some metadata information. And if I go to the details, I can also browse through the changes that were made. Uh, this is also filterable. So, uh, um, and if I go to the datasets tab, I now see an overview of the datasets that are in the repository and can navigate through them. Okay, go to one process. Oh, perfect. Um, Luckily, our admin is with us in this webinar. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. This might be a Yeah, so I'm, I'm, for now, I'm using a different way to go to the data set, and we'll deal with the error later. Um, so this is the data set view for a process. I can see all the relevant information that are displayed in OpenSCA as well, a bit different uh, type of kind of view. And uh, yeah, um, all the elements that are linked, uh, so that are also linked in OpenSCA, are linked here as well. So I can navigate from this process and uh, say uh, I want to take a closer look at the aluminum uh, flow. So I can click on it and I will navigate to the flow. Um, View and then from there I can go to the location and so on. Uh, use this to navigate through the database as well. Okay, so this was the first part of the presentation. I will now switch back to Jonas. Let me see here. Yeah, right. You should now all be able to see my screen. And uh, so I already activated the LCA collaboration server and open LCA via preferences. So enable collaboration. That's what Sebastian showed you in the beginning. I will now create a new database, an empty database. And I'll call it webinar. And then I connect the database to the repository. Um, so the repository path was webinar backup? No, no it was, uh, uh, it was demo, demo webinar. So I now connected to the repository and I built the index. And it's still, it's still an empty database. So there's actually no data in here. There's all, all folders empty. Um, but this will change after I fetch changes from the repository. And uh, this tool also shows the changes that I have to fetch. So depending on how large the database is, this can uh, take a while. Um, but, but basically these are the changes. It's quite a long list. So I will just click OK. And then the patches are changed from the LCA collaboration server. Sebastian, yeah, you would like to add something? something? Information on this view because the, the first view you can you could see is more like an, a more an overview of the commits. So you will see each commit uh, manually. And in the second one you just saw um, briefly, you will see the uh, final um, data sets that will be um, fetched to or downloaded into OpenSCA. So uh, in this case, we only had one commit, but you can imagine that maybe you um, didn't work on the, on the data for a week and uh, your colleagues have done several changes uh, uh, and several commits. Then you, on the first view, you will see, uh, let's say, the five commits that were done, and you can see on each commit which data set was affected. 
Uh, and then the second one, you will see the actual data fetched into OpenSCA. Let's say in, in one, in two of the five commits, the same data set was changed. You will only, of course, get the latest version of the data set and not both. Uh, yeah. And then after that, you can um, take a look, but you cannot pick which changes are fetched. You will always have to fetch all the changes and then undo changes locally in your database and recommit them. Right, and then the import of data obviously depends also on the size of the database again. So once the import is finished, I will have all the data that Sebastian committed to the repository also in my database. Should you take a smaller database next time? I think that might be because we're in the wireless now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a question, Anne Ventura. Uh -huh. sure, um, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, when when you are a reviewer, is it possible um, to bring some changes to uh, to somebody who commits um, some data in the repository before you validate, before you put it as the available version? Sorry, whether it's possible as a reviewer to commit data to the repos repository before no, no, validation? No. To check to check data from uh, another member mm -hmm. and uh, uh, possibly to modify this data before it's available to all of them. You, you mean like sort of a moderator role? Yeah, exactly. Um, this is not possible out of the box, but do you could set up a scenario where you have two repositories and then one user will um, have access to both repositories and will uh, select the changes from one repository into, uh, into another OpenSA database and commit it to the other repository, which is not really um, uh, convenient. Uh, so, yeah, so we might uh, work on a, on a feature later on, but, but now it's not possible to select the data sets, changes, and um, before making them public. So everybody that has access to the repository will be able to see all data sets. Okay, I was, I was thinking of uh, students uh, working on different projects, and the idea was that uh, before you make one project available to others, you may want to change names to avoid conflicts or things like that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I understand the use case, um, but you will have to use uh, two repositories. Uh, All right. It will be a bit of an effort because uh, you cannot be connected to, to two repositories, so you would have to disconnect, reconnect, and fetch several times, uh, yeah. or use two different databases and um, use the OpenSCA local uh, import features to, to um, manage the, the transportation from one data set from one database to another. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it's it's a nice idea of a use case, and we also want to discuss use cases with you afterwards, mm -hmm. so we can pick that up again maybe. Okay. Uh, maybe for now, I, I just would like to show you that now my database is no is no longer empty, so now I have all the processes and also indicators and parameters and all data sets that Sebastian had in this database. They are also now in my database. Um, I will now um, we will now switch back to Sebastian and continue with the demonstration. Okay, there you go. Thank you. Okay, so um, um, I will now uh, 
um, create a new product system in this local database, and I'm using the transport aircraft freight process as a reference process. Um, okay, so the product system is a small one. There's some intelligent processes, but not many. And um, now I will want to commit this to the repository. Which is now, of course, much faster because it's just one data set. And uh, if I go to the website again, I can see the second commit and also goes to the uh, data set. And uh, here in the collaboration server, I have some information on uh, it's a bit for the product system, it's less information than available in OpenSCA. Um, but you see the overall amount of processes and, uh, and links on the right. You can browse through the uh, supply chain here. And you have a graph uh, feature um, that is currently in still is more like a beta feature. So you just see uh, each processes without any more information and can see the linkage just by clicking on it. This will be enhanced in the, in the second version of the collaboration server. Um, and so now I think we are we already going switching back to Jonas. Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. Okay, right, so welcome back to my screen. So Sebastian now applied some changes and to get the most uh, recent version of the repository, I go on fetch. This will now be much faster than before because uh, Sebastian already mentioned the, the first or the initial commit and fetch is always uh, takes uh, longest because where you, you have most data that is different from the repository. So I gonna go on OK. Click on OK. I can also see what has been changed. So that's the product system. Um, I now have this product system in my database. So I can open it. And I can also uh, change the description, for instance. So this now says it has first been created today. And at this time, so I can, for instance, change the timestamp to another time. And maybe also just to make it more clear later on that we see that there has been a change. I also delete the second line. I uh, save this and I also calculate the product system. Results. So I can see the results of my calculation. Impact analysis. And what I will now do is that I will commit my changes again to the repository. So I go and right click repository and I commit my changes. And I will also leave a short notice for Sebastian on what, what I have changed. Um, so I'll leave a short note and I commit my changes to the repository. Um, in addition, I will also change a process. So let's see what processes we have. I, I will take, let's say, this battery production process. And let's take a look at the in or outputs. So I will just change, let's say, this flow to three. And I will also add in the description that I changed the flow. Let's say I updated the flow. 
I save this and I make another comment to the repository. So I commit this change and then I will switch the screen back to Sebastian. Okay, now you should uh, see Sebastian's screen. Okay, so um, before I'm going to fetch the changes, I'm going uh, to try to have a probably common use case, which should be in general try to be avoided, but it's not always possible, uh, especially when you weren't working, uh, when you weren't fetching. Um, directly the data before you were making changes. So I, I will choose the same process as Jonas, the battery production, and also make, make a change. Um, say I edit a description, and I change the validity, or uh, I change the location to Germany, or to Gabon, uh, and I will set this. As I can see on the left navigation, this process is marked as a, as a change. It's not new, but it has, it's, it's, it's changed. And now I, I'm, as a user, I might not be aware that there are any changes in the repository, so I will try to commit these changes. I will be informed that this is not possible because I'm not up to date and first have to fetch the changes that Jonas made. So I'm going to do that. So I can see, ah, there's uh, two, two commits. The one is the product system that has changed, and the other one is the process that I also changed. And if I go to the next screen, I see that there is a conflict for the battery production, because both uh, versions have changed, the ones from Jonas and mine. So I will need to, I cannot go further here right now, because I will need to uh, resolve this conflict by uh, opening it with double click. And now we see the tool that Jonas showed before. Uh, this is the same tool, and it shows me the differences I have uh, in the remote and the local model, highlighted in yellow. And I now can select um, the changes I want to keep in my local model, and which I want to take from the remote model. At the end, when I will click the Marcus Merge button, everything that's on the left will be the information that will be kept in, in the local opening state database. So let's say um, the description of Jonas has, is, uh, is newer or, or better than, than the one I uh, did. So I will use the first button, which is the co copy the selection from right to left. So now, okay, I, I take the description. I keep the location change because I did this as an additional change. And then I check, ah, the battery pack has changed and it has now an amount of three, which uh, I may also take over. So I say, okay, this looks good. So now I have a merge process. The inputs and outputs are the same, also the description, but I still added the location. I will mark this process now as, as, uh, as, as merge completely. And this is now indicated with the asterisk and continue fetching. Okay. So, if I, so now I can see still indicating a change. This is because, from the point of view of the repository, the data set is still changed because on the repository it is still a Jonas version and my changes have not been yet committed. So I can open it and see uh, this is a description from Jonas, my location set, and the input that Jonas set amount. And now I will commit my change, my merged the process data set back to the repository. Okay, um, let's see what's next. Okay, so if I now go to the commits, I can yeah, I now see my merge changes. And if I go to the data set battery production, on the top left, you have the commit that is currently selected. I can go back to the other versions of uh, this. So I can see how the data set looked initially. Here still with the amount of one. 
And um, in bold is highlighted the, the commits where this data set specifically are directly changed. If I go back to the latest version, this is the one with the location Gabon and uh, the amount three. I can now um, also compare this to another uh, previous version. So uh, I could say, okay, I, I want to see what has changed since the initial uh, data set. And then I see others, ah, two, two additions and one change. The addition, uh, first, the first addition is the description highlighted here. Uh, the second is the location here. And below I can see that the amount has changed from one to zero, uh, to three. And I could also uh, select another data set to compare this with, which might not always make sense, but in, if you have similar uh, data sets, uh, it might be helpful to compare them. In this case, it would probably not make too much sense. Let's see. Yeah, everything is different. But um, yeah, I think you get the idea. And um, if you have large uh, lists of inputs and outputs, it might be uh, from first time going to reload the page, so I don't have the comparison. Um, it might be useful to uh, switch to another uh, list of this inputs and outputs, which is grouped by the categories. So you have the reference product, the products, product inputs, and the elementary um, output here, which is the only one. Okay. Um, also, so since um, Jonas calculated the product system and afterwards committed it to the um, repository, I can search here's version. Okay. So now, I, in addition to the supply chain and the graph, I can see the inventory results of this process. Uh, product system. Sorry. Here it makes maybe more sense to have the different the different view here. And uh, I can also calculate impacts on demand with all the impact methods that are available within the repository. So that are committed to the repository. Uh, this doesn't have any uh, for the impacts. Okay, but I think the, the process doesn't have, uh, is not using uh, one mm -hmm. of the flows. So. Right. Okay. Um, now we go to the last part of the presentation, which is uh, showing a bit the task feature. Uh, so we have a review task on the top here. You see this basket uh, for the tasks. And now I can create a new uh, review task. I will call it uh, process changes, for example. And the repository is the demo webinar repository. So now this task is in my to-do list. I will need to select data sets that has to be, have to be reviewed or that I want to be reviewed. Uh, and I say, okay, it's all the product systems. Yes, and uh, now I will add um, Jonas uh, to the task. Since he's a reviewer, he's the only user that is a member of the team with a role, a uh, member of the repository with the role of reviewer, you can select him. And he's shown here as an active uh, reviewer. So if I go back to my task overview, I see that now I don't have anything to do in this task. I'm waiting for the John's input, so it's in progress. And we will switch one time back to Jonas. Um, see. All right. We will now um, yeah, try, try to complete or uh, yeah, complete the task assignment and uh, make a comment on the data set. All right. So now I have the task waiting for me. So I open the uh, web interface and as indicated by the number in this inbox symbol, I have a task assigned to me. So this is my to-do list. To-do list, I open this. 
and I select the task that has been assigned to me, or actually the data set that has, to, has been assigned to me, because uh, one task can consist the review of several data sets. So I, I take a look at this, and now you, you see all these uh, small speech bubbles. And if I activate the review mode, it was, it was updated. So, so the review mode was active, indicated by the speech bubbles. I can also change uh, the comments, or I can actually leave comments. So I can say uh, change has been reviewed, and I don't have any objections. So I can either add the comment and uh, release it immediately, or I can only add it and uh, assign it to a moderator for a review. Uh, no, uh, sorry, uh, this is the case. Uh, uh, if it's just added, then it's like a draft comment. Um, what, uh, I think you mean the. Um, That's right. There's also an approval feature for for the uh, review. So if you co um, configure the repository that it needs an approval by an actual editor with a role editor, then even if he, if John is now adds and released the comment, an uh, an editor will have to approve the comment to be visible to all the other users. But this is a more advanced feature that we won't uh, take into account now. I mm -hmm. think. Right. So, so what I will just do now is to add and release the comment. Mm -hmm. So this has uh, worked. So you also see now that the speech bubble is in green color, whereas the others are in white color. So the green color indicates that the comment has been left uh, for this particular data set. And also if I exit the review mode, you can, uh, you can see only the speech bubbles where comments have been left. Um, and also, if I go to my inbox, I complete the task, and I uh, so I select the data set to that I have reviewed, and I complete the task. And now the task again is in progress and has been uh, is due for moderation. So I change back to Sebastian. Okay, so uh, last uh, but not least, I will show now. If I go back to my tasks uh, overview, oh, sorry, let's click. I will see the to do task is now again, uh, the task is now in my to do list again. I can go to the data set in question, take a look at the comments, uh, and um, yeah, the um, uh, task. I say okay, the task is completed. Uh, or I could also say, ah, I'm not, uh, I'm not happy with the rev with the review. I can assign this task again to Jonas or to another user to uh, do a second review, um, which we will we'll skip now. And then at the end, if I think the ta the whole task is completed, I can complete it here, and now it will be shown as completed in my to do list or task list. Also, if I go to open a CA. And I open the product system. I will see comments here below. So I can see the comments that were made for this particular data set. Uh, also on the field in OpenSCA, I see that there is a bubble indicating there is a comment on the name. So I can see the comment here as well. Not as nicely formatted, but available. And if I go on the database level and also I have a button show comments, which will right now show nothing. We have to check it. So it should be showing all the comment, uh, all the comments of this data set, which was yeah added lately. Okay, so I think yeah. So for for the task and comment, this was uh, all. Uh, now I will show shortly the search feature, and then the presentation will be. Will be completed. So uh, in the web application, you have the search as seen shortly before. Um, what's maybe interesting to to say here? I mean, the, the in general, this is a normal search function, so I can put it here, and then it highlights the uh, found word in the in the results, uh, normal paging, and so on. But I have some filters on the right, so I can say, ah, I only, I'm only interested in the in the data sets from this uh, specific repository. And I'm only interested in uh, processes. And for processes, and uh, you have uh, some, I will 
remove the search filters, sorry. So we have more data sets. So for processes, there are some sub-selections you can have. So you can filter by process type, by the modeling approach, um, by location and so on. And you even have a category tree. So you can say, I'm only interested in the parts and logging, logging data sets. Yeah, and then you have an overview here of all those data sets. And you can also browse again to the data set from here and take a look. Okay, that mm -hmm. concludes the, the demonstration. The demonstration, we have a few slides left Any? of the presentation. And maybe we, we have a discussion in the end. But also we, because we initially scheduled this uh, webinar only until 4 p.m., maybe one brief notice on the test accounts. Did you, okay, right. So basically there are three ways at the moment, I think, how you can use the collaboration server. You can either install it yourself. Um, we, we could host it for you and we can also uh, um, create test accounts for you. I think some of you already approached me and asked for test accounts. So those people, they are on a list and you will receive access very soon. And um, the others who are interested to receive test accounts, maybe just drop me an email and then we can also create some test accounts for you. Um, now I will will just very very briefly introduce uh, some use cases for the LCA collaboration server that we came up with. But we would also be very interested afterwards to maybe hear from you what use cases you have in your mind and where do you see potential for the LCA collaboration server within your organization or your team. So the first use case would be. Or should we start with questions to the demo, to the demonstration? Do you have any questions regarding the demonstration? Maybe before we start with the use cases? Yes, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me well? No, not very well, but we'll try. Maybe just give it a shot. Okay. Uh, I would like to know if it's possible to add comments for each input or output line because for the re review process, um, many information are required to, to, to see if the quantity or the process chosen is good. So also the comments of each line should be reviewed. Yes. Um, so you can make a comment on every visible data set element um, or every um, list element. So the, to answer your question less technical, <laughs> it is possible to um, comment on each uh, input or output separately as well on the location, the valid from uh, information, the description and so on. Or if you have 10 sources in your documentation, you can comment on the sources in general or you can comment each source uh, separately. Okay, thank you. Perfect. Maybe one more question, if there is any. Uh, and Votura, yes, I have a question. Sure. Um, so today, uh, if we go, if we become um, uh, testers with test accounts, so mm -hmm. we have the repository on uh, Green Delta server. Uh, is it possible uh, to use the same utilities with the local server? Yes. yes. So uh, one option is you can use our uh, set of server that we were using for the presentation. A uh, second option is to download the or to download the sources and build the application or ask us to, to be support uh, to support you with that, and then set up a, your own instance of the collaboration server in your local um, internet or available in the internet. Uh, so like you, yeah, you have full control over where the data is hosted. And uh, I think additionally, we would also be available for hosting an instance for you. So setting it up, but this is, uh, this you would have to um, write a request and then we will process this, mm -hmm. I think. So basically the software, the LCA collaboration server as a software will be completely for free. So you can do whatever you want with it. You can download it and install it on your local server at your organization. And uh, the idea with the test accounts was actually, we came up with that to actually ease the start with the LCA collaboration server for you. So we thought that would be easier than installing it yourself. 
But if you want to do that, you're very welcome. Actually, that would also be interesting for us to see um, yeah, how, how it works out for you, if it's easy and what, what problems you maybe face. So that would also be something, I guess, uh, from which we can learn and we would be happy to support you with that. Okay, thank you. Can I squeeze one last question, please? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, I think this is more of a technical question than uh, anything else. Um, how do you enforce and maintain data integrity? I mean, in a case, say for instance, someone decides to undo uh, uh, the last commit repository, but that repository was being fetched by a database prior. Um, how do you maintain integrity? Okay. That's it. Let me um, repeat the question. I'm not sure if I got it correctly. Uh, there were some glitches. Um, so you want to know how we uh, keep the database integrity? Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. You, have, you have a repository on one hand and then you have a database. So say someone decides to undo the last commit, and then, but uh -huh. the database really, really, that actually is referencing that, you know, that repository prior to the rollback. How do you maintain integrity in that sense also yeah. like so so um this um uh, the, let's say we have, a, have a, i will answer this with an example a case so um let's say you have a process data set that you create and uh, also you create the flows for this uh, data set and commit all this to the database then the repository has the same state as the local database and is also uh, uh, the integrity is, is given. Um, so now um, you add a new flow to the database and uh, add this as an input to the process data set, but then you only select the process to be committed to the data set. So on the repository, the flow will be missing. This is in the, uh, right now, this is the, the user's responsibility to, to not do these kind of changes. So to always um, make sure that he commits all the relevant information that should be that is or that is linked to this data set. However, there's a feature which is this searching for reference changes, which tries to solve this automatically, which is not always possible because sometimes it depends on the uh, yeah on the content which is necessary to also commit or not. So the user has to find, at the end has to make the final decision about this but the software tries to aim uh, at you with this. Uh, secondly, there's a validation feature. So we have implemented uh, prior to this in, in, one, in the 1.7 release already a validation feature that you can, so you can right click on the, on the navigation, select, make a sub-selection or select the whole database and run the uh, database integrity check or validation. And this will at least show you if there's any uh, errors on the references and so you can at least uh, after fetching changes from a repository you can uh, yeah, verify if everything is still okay or not did that, did, did that answer the question yeah it did thank you okay great then i would uh, sorry to interrupt uh, this is yes. uh, this is guillaume i have to leave now but uh, i just wanted to thank you for the presentation this is uh, i see why this is adding a lot of values to the users and it's a beautiful interface so i will be communicating with you for more specific questions from the perspective of your co invent but uh, uh -huh. uh, say goodbye and thank you yes great thank you very much for uh, participating okay uh, ciao thank you. And also for the others who maybe don't have time to join our discussion on use cases anymore, we have a new support platform which we're about to launch. It's called ask.openlca.org. And uh, if you have any question on how to use the LCA collaboration server, you can ask a question on that website and we will try to answer it. Um, of course, don't uh, use it for any confidential support requests. So don't ask us for your test accounts on this website. But if you have general questions, how to use the LCA collaboration server or how to set it up, you can use that platform. And then also other users, they will also benefit from your question. So maybe now just very briefly, the use cases that we have in our mind for the LCA collaboration server. So the first example would be if you co-develop uh, an LCA study with an, any other LCA, let's say, I just call it our stakeholder, for instance, if you, we came up with this example of a manufacturer who contracts a consulting office to develop an LTA study of one of their products. So 
in this case, the manufacturer has all the information and knowledge on how energy inputs, raw materials, and other flows relate to specific production processes, but maybe he lacks experiences in actually conducting an LSA study, and this is why he contracts the consulting office. Um, so the consulting office would then have a lot of experience in actually conducting the LCA study. So the manufacturer, he would commit all the data to an LCA collaboration server. Um, the consultant or consulting office would then fetch the data and actually build the product system. He can also then, via the LCA collaboration server, send the product system for review to the manufacturer who can, for instance, uh, comment on specific processes and give feedback on uh, what, what the consulting office came up with actually reflects the, the production process in the factory and um, can send this, uh, this model back to the uh, consulting office. And with this, you, you, the collaboration server actually facilitates an iterative co-development of an LCA study. So this is one of the use cases. Another scenario we came up with, if, for instance, uh, if you want to distribute a, a LCA database to specific stakeholders, uh, often it's quite difficult to actually to track changes if in, if in a database, especially if you apply changes rather often. So this could easily be done via the LCA collaboration server. So all users of it, they can always uh, easily fetch the most recent version and also track changes. Um, so this example is sort of the other way around. You can build and manage verified public LCA repositories. So you would actually have end users commit data to a repository. These changes, they could also be, let's say, reviewed and accepted by a moderator who then builds up a verified database. And this verified database can also be distributed uh, with a public repository that, that is accessible to, to either everyone or a certain amount or limited number or circle of people. This is kind of the use case that was uh, coming up before. Uh, uh, the way I was explaining that you have two different databases and use one as the verified moderated one and the other one as an uh, internal staging uh, database. Yeah, and then only commit the data sets that you want and review it to the public repository. Yes, and another case, uh, maybe rather an enhancement of previous scenarios, is also that you can protect specific data sets in a, in a repository. So you can say users, they can commit or change specific data sets, but other data sets, so-called libraries, they always have to remain the same. So and that's where you can uh, assure the integrity of specific data sets in the repository. Um, right, so th this is basically uh, it for now. Um, we also, I think we also gave you at hand the manual. So you can also resort to the manual to, to get started with the collaboration server. Uh, it's still an early access phase, so we didn't send out the link to too many people. You actually are uh, one of few, let's say, and we would always be happy to receive your feedback also on the manual and to understand what else or what other information we need to give you at hand to make your start with the LCA collaboration server as easy as possible. Um, yeah, but again, we, we also still keen to receive your feedback. We also very briefly presented some use cases, but we are still curious maybe what you have in your mind, how you think you can use the collaboration server, also how you would like to set it up in, in your team, if you would rather be interested in some, uh, let's say, external hosting, or if you want to host an instance yourself. And it would also be interesting maybe to see where you see challenges in using the LCA collaboration server and of course we also want to know how we can make your start as easy as possible so so if you have some input for us we would be happy to receive your feedback uh, actually right now if, if, if you want so if there are some comments yes hi uh, yeah uh, it's Nicolas from EVA and uh, thank you very much for this uh, presentation uh, I need to see with my uh, developer, but uh, I think we will uh, test uh, the this collaboration server or in uh, our own uh, server, and uh, we'll try to uh, to tell you uh, if it works well or not. But uh, nice. Well, sure. And if we can assist you in setting up the server, just uh, 
drop us a message or use the public support platform if it's a an, an issue that is uh, that can also be shared among others to to learn from each other. Okay, thank you. Um, also, it might be helpful if you set up this, uh, if you have this uh, instance set up the successfully, or of course, if you have any questions, you can ask, but if it's set up, it would be good to uh, inform us so we have a bit of an overview of how many instances are running. This is not necessary, but it would be nice, for example, if we, uh, in the presentation, there was an error I will fix later, so I can inform the uh, users that have their own instances that there's a new version uh, or new source code, uh, a new version available, and um, uh, assist you in updating it. Uh, thanks. Um, Hi, this is. Uh, uh, Hi. Sorry, Ben. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, ben Putman from the University of Arkansas. Thanks for this presentation. It's been great. Um, I've been using the collaboration server with the USDA for quite a while, and it's been really nice. And I would, uh, yeah, I'd really like to set up an instance for ourselves in house. And so, if yeah, I guess we, should we just send you guys an email if uh, you'd like to do that? Because I've been trying to do it on my own and I, I've been failing miserably. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, maybe you can specify a little bit at what, what point you've been uh, facing trouble. But I, I guess that uh, that's what we offer. And also, if you have a very specific issue, maybe you can also, again, use the public support platform. And then we will try to answer by other platform. But uh, yeah, in general, that's that's the way we would imagine to support you. Yes. Right. Yeah, okay. I think it's very fun uh, with you. Thanks. Imagine that, that the questions are uh, um, tunneled through you and the platform, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. So uh, yeah, you can ask us also by email, then of course, and uh, then this will get forwarded to me, and I will take a look. Uh, to to yeah to support you in setting it up. Okay, thank you. So there was one more question. I think yes, uh, and Ventura. Uh, I I was uh, yes. Thank you for this webinar because it it makes things clearer on um, how to use it. And my idea of use it was uh, for students. Um, so I. Um, one of my questions, but you answered it, was uh, how to protect some specific data sets. So this is important with students because uh, sometimes they are very have a lot of fun in destroying some elementary flows. So uh, it's nice to be able to protect them. Um, the other question I had is that uh, when I work with them, they usually start with the same project. Uh, they, they all have to do the same thing in the same time. So uh, I was wondering if, if it was possible that each student uh, could have its own child categories inside which all uh, what he produced is, uh, is isolated from the other because they all create same types of uh, elementary flows and same types of system. So if they are all uh, getting in one, um, it's not possible to control what the students are doing separately. Um, yeah, to, uh, so for the first question with the protection of the lab, uh, it kind of goes together. But um, so the library feature is really very basic and it was more, um, yeah, what we had in mind in the beginning was that you may not know about all the protected data sets, so it would be helpful if you want to commit the data set that you get informed that this is a protected data set. However, you will still be able to change it and uh, also commit these changes to the repository. Okay. Um, so it's, it's more an information uh, so you don't accidentally uh, pu publish um, protected data sets. Um, is it, it's, uh, we were thinking about uh, having, um, yeah, also making this protected data sets not be able to be changed. But this is on the, on a list of features that might be added, but it's a bit uh, more complicated than it might sound in the beginning. Uh, so, um, so that's not yet implemented. And the same applies for for a, for a sub selection of data sets to be able to change or, uh, or fetch. So everybody. 
that has uh, access to the repository will be able to work on all the data sets within this repository. The only thing that can be uh, managed is the, the role. So you can have uh, your students uh, on, on, if you have one database that you want, that you definitely don't want to be changed, you could add your uh, students uh, only as a reader. Um, and they could have their own repositories, which can be clones uh, of, the, of the original one. Um, um, to to work there and commit changes uh, that are not then pushed to the to the one repository that you don't want to have changed. Okay, so in that uh, configuration, then they cannot um, commit the data to the repository; they just can uh, fetch it. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah. uh, so, so I cannot control what they do. So um, okay, so it's. Uh, but it's, it's still interesting anyway that in, and and the other question was that when you define members of a group or a team mm -hmm. so all these members must have, must have a user account exactly yeah right yeah okay so if you work with uh, 50 students they must first all create a user account um uh, well it depends if they uh, only want to access the data so to fetch it basically um mm -hmm. I will take a look. I, um, maybe you can uh, write afterwards an email to us and then I can uh, provide you with more information. I will have to check myself, but there's a feature that you can, uh, basically you can make a repository public, then you don't need any uh, login. Okay. You can also access it then on the website um, without logging in. Um, and you can import this, uh, import this repository in OpenSCA, so you will not connect your database to the repository, but you have some sort of import. It's basically downloading the repository as a JSON ID zip file and importing it into OpenSCA, but in one step. So this way you can distribute your data uh, without the students being able to change it and they don't need to have each an account. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, thank you. But anyway, for this, for us, this feedback is helpful because it's the very, very first version of the LCA collaboration server. And of course, in the future, we also plan to develop it further. So if we, we always get similar requests, we might also set priorities in this respect. Yeah, and just uh, to, to have an overview on the resources you have at uh, Green Delta now for this kind of uh, upscaling. Um, uh, because it's free and it's like a, a new, a new free add-in to OpenLCA. Um, how many people will will, will work uh, on on the, the the support and the, the development of, of the tool uh, for the future? Well, I guess it also depends on uh, on how many people use it and uh, and with let's let's say. Uh, if, if we, for instance, get additional funding, maybe also from research projects to further develop the LCA collaboration server. Um, so that, that's a bit difficult to say. At, at the moment, this has been mostly developed by Sebastian. But of course, we, uh, we would like to offer services, support services for the LCA collaboration server. And if there are a lot of requests, then we're also able to allocate more resources. Okay, okay, thank you. So, but, but I guess we can always scale up so the resources will match the demand, kind of. Okay, thank you. So, maybe one more question, if there is any. Okay. So if there's no other question, then I think we can conclude this webinar. And we would like to thank you for your participation, participation, sorry.